power at him. That's it, man. This should draw a cloud, but it's not. Yeah. And, and, and the other ones, the other ones in the, the phone that says music for Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all, right. all right, let's all stand and take our hymn books to page 82, page 82. Praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave himself for man to die, that he might then redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. And God the Father's own right hand, where angels host adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the So we just give you praise now, Lord. Lord help our, thank help you. us to worship you in spirit and yes, truth, Lord. Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank y'all for coming. Beautiful day today. It's going to be 70 something small. And I don't mind the clouds if it's warm. It's a, well, what a blessing. What a blessing to be here. Blessing to be alive, ain't it, Brother Amen. 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 What a blessing. Uh, does anybody have a birthday this week? Anybody? Uh, anybody got an anniversary this week? No? Well, I got a spiritual birthday this week. Amen. I'm born again, March the 5th, 1978. 
Lawrence the fifth. How old does that make me? <laughs> a lot younger than April the 16th, 1954. 75. Uh, what? 75. 75. Find him in and put and cast him in the outer darkness. Uh, what, 40 46. what? 46. 46. I'm 46. I'm 46. Oh, to be 46 again. <laughs> anyway, thank y'all for coming. Uh, let's take up some prayer requests. Uh, let's pray for our nation. God help us. You know, I think Ronald Reagan said the last great hope of the world is America. And so uh, I think the last great hope is Jesus. Amen. But he, he sure has used America a whole yes. lot. Amen. And so let's pray for America. Pray for our churches today that they come out of their worldliness and get back to the book and out yes. of entertainment and back to real worship on their face instead of on their feet. But uh, let's pray for our churches. Pray for our church today, folks, to show up for the preaching hour. Amen. And I'm going to preach on the most neglected passage in the Bible. <clears throat> and uh, then pray for uh, those in our church who are so, so, so sick and suffering with sickness and diseases. Uh, Danny is not in here. The latest update on Danny's wife was they're taking her for more tests this week. And they're hoping to find out that her pancreas just has a spot. That maybe they can cut the spot out and not take the whole pancreas out because it is cancer. They know that. So pray for Deborah. That's her name. Pray, yeah. pray for her and pray for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a sweet man. He, 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 yeah. 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 Pray for him. All right. Any others? Good to see Amanda here looking pretty today. And, well, Kim, he's, he's looking today. <laughs> hey. Pray for our son-in-law, Elton LeVan Brown. Uh, he's got some real problems. Uh, he almost died, and yet he wanted to die. He didn't want to live. Yeah. So uh, pray for him that he'll get the spirit back in him again and, and, and do well. Uh, he's feeling a little better now, but he needs a lot of help. Yeah, he had a serious stroke. I went to see him yesterday. Can I say something? Yes. Now, this is not a prayer request. Well, it's a thank, thankful. I'm so thankful for our church family. Mm -hmm. So many calls and cards, and I'm just so thankful for your prayers. Amen. I can't tell you how much I love you and how much we appreciate you. Amen. Because you, we felt like you were right there with us when you were. And I'm so thankful because the devil has fought us for over a month now. I mean, as hard as he could fight, but thank God greater is he that's in me Amen. than me that is in the world. Amen. So I just wanted you all to know I appreciate you and I love you and I thank you. Amen. Great, great testimony. All right, any other prayer requests? All right, Jerry. Good to see Jerry all the way up from the country of Lancaster, South Carolina. Devil's country. Devil's country. But, uh, <laughs> remember all the police find EMS and they have a dangerous, I wouldn't do it any day. If you give me a million dollars, I wouldn't be one to die. Too dangerous. Okay. Uh, anybody in? All right. The Bible says pray, therefore, one for another. Amen. So let's pray for each other. Bonnie? Lindsay called last night and said that the insurance said they weren't going to pay for any more than 28 days, and she was down in Charleston 28 days, the end of February. But her mentor, sponsor, whatever you call them down there, uh, said that she's fighting for her to be there four more weeks. And just pray that she doesn't come home because... 28 days is not enough in rehab for cocaine addiction. <laughs> and um, I just pray that the insurance will agree with the center because she's got to get over this and be a parent to her children. Because mama's getting worn out. <laughs> so please help me pray hard that they don't let her come home or make her come home. And I 
appreciate all the prayers, all the prayers and all the calls and help that I've gotten. I love my church family. Without y'all, I couldn't make it. Joey? We need to pray for Sheila. She says she's fine, but she's not. And um, I think she needs to get some more help. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. We love Sheila. We love Sheila. Yeah. I asked her if she could raise that arm up. She said, no. I said, well, do the other one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Amen. Any others? Yes, we'll tell you. I always ask for prayer for the kids in children's church. Um, but I'd like to ask today if y'all could pray for me in children's church. Because I, I really want to deliver good messages that they can understand. Amen. You know, lead them to Christ. So if you'll pray for me, that God will just help me. Been there, done that. Amen. He would. He said, "Okay, oh, mouth wide, he'd feel it." Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Any others? Oh, I got the pressure for him. My furnace quit on me a couple nights ago, and I just prayed that it wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg that I'd be able to afford to fix it. And I was, and I'm so thankful to God because He definitely was looking out for me because I do not have the money to have a lot of work done or replace it at this point. Amen. So that's definitely a prayer report. Amen. 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 Barbara, did you have to hand You're just no, praising the Lord. Just praising the Lord. Amen. 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 Any others? All right. What? Let's see, Brother Darrell here. This is my other brother, Darrell. <laughs> my other brother, Darrell, quit coming, but he keeps on coming. Would you pray for all these? Lord, we thank you for some more involvement. Yes. For all your love that you have for us and all you've done for us. Yes, Father. Lord Jesus. We thank you for our salvation most of all, Father. Yes, Help us, Lord. Lord. We pray for our church this morning and our yes. pastor. Yes, God. Me we pray Lord. that you Please would be come with the pastor. pastor. Lead him to give us the service today that we need. And we pray, Father, for all the sick that's listed this morning. Yes. You know who they are, Father. Especially for Danny's wife and his family, Father. We ask for blessing for healing. Yes. And comfort, Father. <clears throat> we pray that you be with the Karen and our children's church, Father. Please. Yes. That should be one of the most important parts of our ministry. That's right. And we pray that you be with each member here today, Father. I hope we feel your presence this morning. Yes, Lord. We love you and we thank you for everything. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good to see you all this morning. We're in Second Corinthians. And... Uh, to be honest with you, I, I lost my place. I used four Bibles. I shouldn't do that. And so, uh, me and my wife was talking about it. We tried to agree on where I stopped. And I think I finished. Did I start in chapter 8? Did I finish 7? Let's see. Uh, no? You didn't start on 8, but I think you finished. Yeah, that's what I was saying too. All right, chapter 8, 1 through 6. That's what I studied anyway. Uh, uh, I'm going to say about studying the Bible verse by verse and through the book uh, I wanted to say this that uh, people don't do it anymore and that's why they're swept about with every wind of doctrine and uh Chapter 8, verse 1 through 6. Uh, we have, I, want, I don't know a better word, we have buffet Bible teaching. Buffet. You know what buffet is? You just walk through there and say, well, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you just forgot what you want. Well, that looks sweet. I'm going to get you some of that. You know, you just, do y'all feel like that in the day we live in? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they take one verse and preach an hour and a half on that one verse and they don't connect it with any other verse right. and, and so uh, so it's just a buffet type Bible teaching. that's what I call it and by the way there's no turnip greens on that buffet there's no spinach on that buffet there's no anything that would be bitter are offensive to the palate. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's there, but you're not going to pick it. And that's what our modern day Christian is. You got Joel Osteen, and uh, he's got girl hair in the back, and 
boy features in the front. He's real cute and real pretty. And he's going to make you feel better because he's going to take you to the buffet and he's going to say, now that's sweet. That's what you want. Right there. That's sweet. But you know, the Word of God is quick. It's alive and it's powerful. Right. It's sharp Amen. with a two-edged sword. Amen. It'll cut. It divides yes. coming and going. Amen. Even to the joints and the marrow. That, that means it doesn't just affect the spirit. It affects the body right. too. Amen. Yeah. And so I like Sunday school to be verse by verse. Okay, let's just read verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1 through 6. <clears throat> We're just reading the holler, reading the holler, okay? Uh, in verse 1, he said, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. He says, think about this. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing to give of themselves, praying with us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. <clears throat> Insomuch that we desired Titus that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Now, this is a testimony inspired by God <clears throat> For the Apostle Paul to give record of this church, this body of believers, and their love and their charity and their giving toward other ministry, not just their own. Yeah. That's what that's about. Mm -hmm. Now the whole book of Second, now we remember the first book of uh, First Corinthians was written, the first letter was written to straighten some things out. I wouldn't want you couldn't form your church after the book of First Corinthians, right. but you could after the book of Second Corinthians. So the first one was straighten them out. The second letter was written to thank and praise these saints for the ministry and the giving that they were doing outside of their own little body there, and the Macedonian church, not the Corinthian church. Now he said this. In verse 7, he said, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge, and in all diligence, and your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. And what grace is that? What, uh, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do to uh, you to wit, to think about, of the grace of God bespoke, bespoke, bestowed I'm sorry, on the churches of Macedonia. Now, and what he's saying, uh, uh, we would like, I'd like to encourage you, the Corinthians, to also be like other churches that their ministry is about giving and not receiving. And uh, you, don't, you, you don't hear that much anymore. It's the grace of God. God was good to these people through other people, okay? Uh, God's good to us through other people. Amen. Uh, I don't know anybody that got saved without somebody else. I, I don't. Yeah. I've heard stories of people say, well, the first time I read this gospel track, I got saved. Didn't nobody witness me. Who wrote the track? Right. Who paid the money to print it and distribute right. it? Amen. Who handed them out? Amen. So much unbiblical thought and teaching because of selfishness. People just so right. selfish. And they don't want to give anybody credit for anything else. I'm just true. saying, if it wasn't somebody else, we'd be in a mess, every one of us. Right. Yeah, amen. Right. Somebody raised us. Somebody loved us. Somebody fed us. Somebody clothed us. Somebody prayed for us. Somebody ministered to us. Somebody <laughs> witnessed to us. Somebody followed through on that witness and witness, and somebody else followed through on, on that witness and witness. And uh, as they, somebody had to plant the seeds, and then somebody else had to water the seeds so that they could produce faith. Yeah. Uh, 
our churches are selfish and and, and I'm, I'm not talking about necessarily mission work but mission we give a lot of mission to be a little church uh, but I'm also talking about individually church has evolved into a spectator sport yeah. Yeah. not a participator I'm not talking about the singing and the jumping up and down and all that stuff <clears throat> that's not even church I'm talking about the local body of believers now <clears throat> they come to church and they say well Preacher, teach me something if you can. Mm. Yeah. Sunday school, teach me something if you can. Mm. And then they don't do anything with what they learn. Yeah. Amen. And it is about money sometimes. Mm -hmm. Did you know money is the should be the least important thing in a church? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Money don't mean anything to God. That's right. God owns it all. Amen. And he can take it from a heathen and give it to you if he right. wants to. That's right. That's right. He's done it. Amen. Amen. So the Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's writing to this church about the grace of giving, even through verse 2, trials of affliction, and out of their poverty they gave joyfully, and they bounded unto the riches of their liberality. These were real Christians. Yeah. Do you know who gives the most to charity? Yeah, Poor people. Yeah. Poor people. Yeah. You know why? They've been there. Mm -hmm. right. They've been there. They know how it is to go to the store and you can't afford bread and butter. You got to make a choice. You know, rich people don't know that stuff. No. Uh, the the economy rising and falling that don't affect those people. <laughs> It don't matter if they pay a dollar more for this stuff. <coughs> they got more money than 10 people could live on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, real love is giving. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what real love is. And uh, all right, uh, look at verse 8 and 9. In verse 8 and 9, I speak not by commandment, by, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. He said, I'm not commanding you by God to do anything. I'm just showing you how these people forwarded it. And, uh, and by the sincerity of their love. And then verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, Amen. that he might through his poverty that, that ye, through his poverty, might be rich. He's talking that, 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 that there's no money there. That's not money, okay? I don't care what the TV preacher says. That's not money. We're rich. We're great. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you. We got a lot more than what we deserve. That's right. Yes. Yes. We got so much, we can give it away. Amen. <laughs> That's what rich is, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That you have so much, you can give it away. Amen. That's rich. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm rich. <clears throat> but it's not, much, well, compared to most of the world, everybody in this world, in, in this room, is rich. Yeah. You've right. got a house to live in, food, regular yes. meals, and good Thank clothes you. to wear. Yeah. And then on top of that, you got transportation. Thank you. <clears throat> you, got the, you got a little money in the bank, man. Amen. We're all rich that way, but... That's not the greatest riches. The greatest riches is the love of God planted in our heart. Yeah. Yeah. And we got so much we want to share it. But how much sharing is going on nowadays? In the grace of God. Not much. Not much at all. And I'm talking about believers too. Because only the believers know this. Yes. Now we received that grace that abounded in us. So now we're to forward <coughs> to forward that love of God. <clears throat> now what does that mean? It means, what is it, Jude 23, having compassion on some, making a difference. Mm -hmm. Having compassion on some, making a difference. And it goes on to talk about hating and eating the garment and the, and, and the snatching from the gates of hell, you know, and the fires right before they drop off into the fire. Yeah. That's the love of God. That's not yeah. monetary. That's spiritual riches. Yeah. And you can be financially poor and be spiritually rich. Yeah, yeah. And a matter of fact, the most usually, let's be honest about it, we're more spiritual when we're in need than when we're not in need. That's right. That's right. 
Because we look at people different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, when you're not, not, not in need, you look bum. <laughs> but when you need, you say, oh my, God help them. Yeah. Help me to help them. Yeah. Now, if you go to the smorgasbord or the buffet of Christianity, you're not going to see this. Yeah. Because according to their teaching, everybody's got to be financially and monetarily rich in order to show the blessings of God. Yeah, that's <laughs> I don't know if they could tell Ruth that. That's right. Yeah. I don't know if they could tell the disciples who slept in the dirt outside most of the time that, you know. But that's the way the world thinks. That's not what God thinks. God commanded these churches to give offerings to this church that was in financial need so that they could be helped. <clears throat> and love goes beyond that commandment of, of physical help into the spiritual help. Yeah, yeah. Right. But sometimes a financial offering will give encouragement. It will show love, things like yeah. that. To somebody that's in need, you know. If, if you're real hungry, uh, Bible study. You'll want to do it, but you're real distracted. I'm talking about real hunger. I'm not talking about you missed your fourth snack today. <laughs> uh, but then he goes beyond that commandment. He said, why don't we be like Jesus? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And Jesus, Jesus never talked about financial things. A man come to him one day and said, well, we need a pair of taxes. He said, well, go down there at the river and catch fish. And I imagine, he said, what? Yeah. They ain't going to take fish for the taxes. <laughs> so he went and caught fish and found a coin in his head. Brought yeah. back he said, whose face is on there? He said, Caesar's. He said, well, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and render to God the things that are God. He didn't preach on rich is financial. That's right. He preached on seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things being done to you. Amen. Amen. That's a whole different story. But yeah. when do you hear that at the buffet? No, that's bitter. I don't want none of that. That's 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 called tribulation and that's called trial and whew, sure don't want none of that. That's patience. If I get the only way I'm gonna get patience is to have some trial and some tribulations. I'm staying away from that. Are y'all thinking like I'm thinking we've got off track yeah. somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. The church, the church is, each church is individual. Not all churches are guilty of this. I know that. But those that the world out there that we see on TV and things like that, love goes beyond money. And look at verse 10, 11, and 12. And herein I give my advice. For this is expedient for you. <clears throat> now this is going to help you. This is going to move you on along. This is expedient for you, okay? <clears throat> And by the way, when you read the Bible, put you there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you are the Corinthian church. You are the Macedonian church. You are. Okay. He said, and, and this is his speaking for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so that there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. Now, not a commandment. It's a, let me help you with this. Gifts are good. That was good. You got, you got the right idea. That's good. Uh, but remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, if, if, if you're going to think about it, you're going to talk about it, the last part of that verse he said, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. Right. Now here's, here's strange. I'm going to teach you some, uh, it's not politics, it's government. And uh, I don't remember if it was <clears throat> Thomas Jefferson or uh, Andrew Jackson. I think it's Andrew Jackson. He was the first one of the people and by the people. But, uh, Andrew, they were debating on whether or not that to take tax money <clears throat> and give it somewhere where there had been a tragedy or something. And uh, he said something like this, I'm paraphrasing. He said, 
I don't think we're going to do that this way. I'm going to take question. He said, well, here's the reason why. It's easy to take somebody else's money and give it away. Mm -hmm. yeah. But how many of you would vote that you give this money? Yeah. And the bill didn't pass. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't want to give anything. It's easy to give somebody else's money away. Right. Sure. All right, we're the same way in church. Yeah. There's an emergency. There's a need. There's a missionary in despair. There's mm -hmm. something. Uh, Samaritan's Purse is helping these people. We want to help them. We want to, and we do want to help them. But it's real easy to vote for the whole church to give it out of the church fund. Mm -hmm. But how many would give if we said, we're taking up individual love mm -hmm. offerings right. for this today? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. But isn't that how the church operates now? Yes. It is. Now, we give Wednesday night others offering, but only about less than, I'd say, less than one quarter of this church attends on Sunday night, on Wednesday night. So who's really giving the love offering? One quarter of the people that attend this church. And I do it so I can say it's not a benevolence fund. A benevolence fund is where you just pile up money to give to causes, but this is a, a, a love offering, and I don't want to embarrass people right. Right. by taking up a love offering. Well, you want me to be honest about that? I don't want to embarrass the people sitting in the pews by taking up love offering because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. three-fourths of them not going to give. Yeah. So on Wednesday night, I take it up because I know those people are, are, are the strong people, and they're going to give. So when it gets time to give that money, that money accumulates, mm -hmm. and I got more to give them. Amen. Mm -hmm. But you think that way because you think individuals are no longer thought, they no longer think along the lines of what giving really is. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the love of Christ that compels me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to give out our necessity. We say, well... The Lord has given me, I, I don't know what people make anymore, it's, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> but we say, I'll just say, the Lord has given me $500 this week. And so I got to tie 10% of that, and that's 50 bucks. That's the first thing I do. And so I got $450 to pay my rent, pay for that 55 inch screen TV, and pay for that new $435 a month car payment. I wouldn't make a $435 a month car payment. I'd buy me a bicycle and put an electric motor on it. Right. But anyway, that's you. And uh, so I got this, and I got this. So really, I can't spare anything. Well, you're missing the whole point. The point is to give out of our necessity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God's give this to me, mm -hmm. and I ought to be willing to sacrifice a little of something to help somebody else who has Thank you, Lord. nothing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Now don't sit there and look at me like I'm mad at you. Yeah. And I don't yeah. <laughs> change political <laughs> parties or something. I haven't. <laughs> this is Christianity. Yes. 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 He said, it's expedient for you if you do this. This will help you. Amen. Yeah. You know why he it says it's, it's better to give than to receive? Because we're selfish. And when I yeah. give, I get a blessing. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. I don't give because I'm a great Christian. Amen. <laughs> Most of the time I give, I say, well, if I give this, he's going to give me back. He's going to bless me. <laughs> you know, But that's not really the way we're supposed to think. No. That's not really the way we're supposed to think. He's just saying, if you do give, you'll get blessed. But that should not be the reason I give. That's right. But is that not the reason most people give if they give now? Well, I ain't preaching. I'm just talking, okay? Yeah. yeah. If you want to jump in, it's Sunday school. Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Terry? This um, came to me in a lesson recently that I was doing. And I've tried to apply it. And a few times I have, and I'm thankful for that that I've been given so much mercy and so much grace Amen. that it, I'm covered with it. I'm full of it. I need to give yeah. that too. Amen. You're talking Amen. about just money. So if somebody cuts me off in traffic, that's okay now. 
That's right. Yeah. Well, I can be graceful. I can be merciful. Amen. Because I'm full of it. Yeah, I mean, not Man. that, but. <laughs> <laughs> individual giving now. Right. And so, he's telling this church, uh, if you listen to me, this is going to help you. I'm not trying to steal from you. I'm not trying to hurt your church. I'm trying to help your church. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 through 6. That's page 867. It's in my Bible. None of you have a Bible like mine. Because mine has a wide... Ecclesiastes. 867. Ecclesiastes, and while you're turning there, I want to read you verse uh, 13 through 15 here in chapter 8. What? What verses? 1 through 6, I think it is. We'll get to that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, and then go back to chapter 8 in 2 Corinthians. If you haven't made it to Ecclesiastes yet, just wait. I'm going to read it to you anyway. Amen. Look at verse 13, chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Look at, if you will, look at verse 13. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened. Did you see that? I'm not trying to steal from you to make somebody else feel better. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. I mean, if God is equal and they have a need, and we don't have a need, and we have it, and they don't have it, well, by the equality that God's given you, by yeah. what he's given you, yeah. okay? And he said, but by an equality that now, at this time, your abundance may be a supply for their wants, that their abundance also may be a supply for your wants. That there may be equality. In other yeah. words, there's going to come time they might need you. You might That's need right. them. That's right. Okay. Okay. Now, as it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. In other words, whether you've got a whole lot or a little, God's going to take care of your needs. Amen. By somebody else if he has to. I'm not talking about socialism. Right. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about Christianity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay? Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Yeah. You ever threw something in the ocean? It'll come right back at you. <laughs> Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For well, thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Share with people. Because it's going to come back. See? If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. It's all coming back down. Yes. Yeah. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. If you look at the circumstances, you'll never give anything. Yeah. He that observeth the wind. And he that regarded the cloud shall not reap. You ever, do, yeah. you ever want to do something, you want somebody to do it with you, and you told them, they said, I oh, don't know, it's pretty cloudy. It might rain. Yeah. Well, it might not. <laughs> well, the weatherman said it was, well, who made him God? 
And God turns winds all the time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. According to all them, all the polar ice caps are going to melt. Yeah. And the ocean's going to come up to Chester, South Carolina. <laughs> I said, amen. It won't take me so long to get to the beach. That's right. <laughs> all things work together for the good of this and <laughs> right. And I'm laughing at because none of that's true. You know it's not. These people make money by doing these things and get yes. government grants. That's all that is, okay? And uh, our politicians are dumb enough to give it to them because they want to sound politically mm. correct. Mm. Now, as verse 5 says, as thou, as thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In other words, <clears throat> uh, I don't know the way of the Spirit, how it works. It, it, I have a Spirit, right, yeah. but I don't know how it works. I don't know how a baby grows from uh, minuscule nothing into a grown human being in the womb. I, I, I don't understand that. How does his bones grow? You know, he ain't drinking milk, you know. God knows all that. So. And I don't understand how that works. I, I, I just trust it. I just trust it. And by the way, if you're trying to figure all that stuff out, you're going to go start raving mad. Right. Look at verse 6. In the morning, so I see. Well, what if it's cloudy? So you see. Yeah. What if it's too hot? So you see. Yeah. In the morning, so thy seed, and in the evening, would not hold thy hand. Work. Just because it's getting a little bit in the evening, ain't time to quit. That's right. In the mail, they had to ring the bell or the buzzer before we could quit. They rung, rung, rung the buzzer yeah. for, for start, they rung the buzzer for smoke break. <laughs> Two smoke breaks. <laughs> And they rung the buzzer for lunchtime, and they rung the buzzer to go home. We never questioned buzzer. We just looked for it to begin, you know. And in the morning sow thy seed, and the evening would hold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether uh, shall prosper. You don't know what's going to happen with it. Right. Either this or that. You don't know whether it's going to be good or bad. <laughs> he says, or oh, whether they both shall be alike good. You know what he's saying? Just do the right That's thing. Right, and you don't know how it's going to turn out. That's up to God. Amen. And one church gives to another. This church gives to Apostle Paul's ministry and, and Timothy and Titus and all. They got to eat. Yes. They got to travel. Don't count pennies on them. That's right. Yeah. You don't know how it's going to turn out. It may be the one that you thought was the weakest to turn out to be the greatest of all of them. Amen. You know, Amen. just do what's right. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Oh, <laughs> Bob Jones Senior, nothing like the current one. Don't worry about that. <laughs> he he growled. He preaches old Methodist preacher. You know, he said, "You ought to do right. You ought to do right. You ought to do right if the stars fall. You ought to do right." That's true. <laughs> Leave the consequences up to God. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, that kind of sacrificial giving always produces something equal in the, maybe a different area of the believer's life, but something is going to happen. Amen? Yeah. Uh, we have to be careful where we sow our seeds. We give, and we don't send food. We don't grow food. And it used to be a poor pastor had to, you know, raise chickens and, and pigs and everything. We don't do that anymore, so we can't send it. All we got is money. Yeah. So that's what we have to give. Amen. And that's what people need now is money. Amen. And we can't count pennies on these people and say, well, he bought two gallons of gas when he should have bought one. Well, uh, uh, we can say what the extremes are and what they are not. For instance, I don't want to support a Filipino missionary right. who's got five churches under him and his church. Exactly. He's become a little pope. That's right. mm -hmm. Why didn't he start those churches and let them go? Amen. Uh, Brother Barrett, we support him because he's going to plant churches, grow them a little bit, mm -hmm. find them a pastor, a local, you know, they're, they're people, yeah. Brazilian people, 
and he's going to find a pastor for him. Then he's going to go on another town, do the same thing. Amen. Another town, do right. the, that's what the Apostle Paul did. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. And uh, those people that he's uh, supporting, if they come over, say, "Well, we need a little help getting started, and 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 uh, we need this big giant uh, uh, American church like that Catholic church." Over there. I said, "You're not getting that here. Go out there and be a, a lean to, or a, a, let's go over to Cambodia, let's go to Thailand, let's go places where their churches are made out of sticks and brush, and they get just to get under the shade, you know." Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just yes. our churches don't talk about this stuff anymore. They're, one reason is they're afraid to talk about money. It's hard to get a pastor to talk about money yeah. to anybody other than the pastor or his wife. <laughs> uh, when I went to Bible college, the first thing they taught us in pastoral theology was if a church calls you, and you pray about it and God leads, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask how much they're going to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask for benefits. Now, if you call one, he says, well, I need $150,000 a year plus insurance. Yeah, and vacation time. And vacation mm -hmm. time. And don't forget that car. you got to get me a new car. Mm -hmm. I've never asked for anything. Sometimes to my own hurt, but I didn't ask, you know. And uh, so... Christianity is not about money. It's about what what will your love do for other churches Amen. or other people Amen. in your church and things like that, okay? Uh, man, I can't believe we've got that much time left. Y'all doing good. Uh, he said, uh, verse 16, But thanks be to God which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. God laid on this young preacher. He, he, he had a burden for these people. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. Nobody had to send him. If you're a missionary in Southern Baptist Convention now, here's the, what, the rules they made about 15 or 20 years ago. Number one, of course, is you got to have a professional faith. They don't have a Baptist doctrine you have to agree with anymore. You can just about be anything as long as you're baptized. <clears throat> but uh, the other is this. Uh, you had to graduate uh, liberal arts, and then you had to have four years of seminary. Mm. Whoa. Whoa. By the way, their cemeteries are really, seminaries are really cemeteries. <laughs> you go in with a lot of faith and come out with nothing. <laughs> but... This man went. I don't see a, a, anybody telling him he's got to go. I see he's got a burden and he went. Amen. When I was a young preacher, I was still going to Bible college at night, working a full-time job and working at the church, and me and my wife going to bus ministry, and I felt uh, uh, this young man in Bible college from Indian Trail talked me into, he said, why don't we start a church uh, in Lancaster? You're from Lancaster, I said. Well, that sounds real good. Maybe we ought to do that because everybody knew in life was going to hell. They come under the three L's. They was in jail, out on bail, or already in hell. I didn't know any good people. So I thought that'd be a good place to start. So we picked the worst place in town and a liquor store. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> we started a church in that old liquor store. We didn't know what we was doing. I had no idea. I had never started church. I'd never been in on starting a church. I didn't even know the biblical qualifications to start a church. I just had a burden, and this guy encouraged it. I didn't talk to my pastor about it. Amen. I didn't talk to my, don't say amen right there. Yeah. I didn't talk to my uh, Bible, uh, my pastoral theology teacher. On. I, I didn't. I should have. That's what Paul did, though. When God called him to preach, he just went preaching. He didn't go back to Jerusalem and ask permission. To I was already preaching. Yeah. I was preaching every all the time. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But starting a church, church is a different yeah, I'm time. About preaching, preaching. Yeah, yeah. So Titus wants to go to preach, and God sent him. God, Titus wants to go help these people, so God sent him. And we'll get on, on Monday nights, we're going to be teaching on uh, Ephesians. Uh, we're going to teach on the church and how you start things, stuff like that. But you're right. He got a burden. He went. Amen. He didn't have a committee. He didn't have a board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't even have a board preacher to talk to. Mm -hmm. 
You know, he just went. And that's fine. We all ought to go. But he didn't try to say, well, it's going to cost me $150,000 a year to do this. He just went and trusted the Lord. All right? Uh, let's see. Verse 18. And we have sent with him the brother. Now, who's we? Who's we? The apostles, right? Paul wasn't with the apostles then. He was out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thank God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, Paul, oh, Timothy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we've sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout <laughs> all the churches. So Paul said, yeah, you ought to go, but let me send somebody with you. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Not a thing. Amen. We'll go two by two. Yeah. yeah. All right. And not only that, not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches, those churches that Paul had planted, who was chosen of the churches to travel with us with his grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and the declaration of your ready mind. You see that? Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance, which is administered by us. You can't give us the credit. That's what he's saying. Don't blame us. People say, boy, I like your preaching. I said, don't, if you get anything good out of me, don't blame me. Blame the Lord. Blame the, that's who the credit belongs to, by the way. Y'all still with me? Yes. yes. Now, when I was talking about planting churches here, we're talking about supplying these churches and yes. ministering these churches, okay? Uh, verse 21. Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men, is what we're doing in what we call ministry and our love and our compassion. <laughs> Does the world see it as honest things? Most not anymore. <clears throat> and we have sent with them our brother, whom we have often. Whose phone is that? Please turn it off. <laughs> Either turn your hearing aid on and or turn the phone off. Huh? some jobs coming out. You got a job right here. Turn it off. Amen. Listen. <laughs> and we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligently in many things but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren to be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Wherefore, show ye to them and be before the churches the proof of your love and our boasting on your behalf. Now, I didn't mean to sound mean to you all the way. I'm ADD. Every time that thing rings, I lose my place. Now, <clears throat> verse 20 through 22, that abundance in verse 20, that's physical and spiritual abundance, okay? They administered these by the servants of Christ. Verse 23, Titus was called a partner and a fellow helper didn't mean correct you to him, but he wasn't a church planter at that time, his partner and a helper. In verse 23, uh, these men were called messengers. Not much like the current preachers and messengers we have who demand so much and give so little. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? These messengers gave it all. They surrendered it all. Amen. They left it all, and they left it all up to him to take care of them. Now, <clears throat> either we're going to live by faith and share <clears throat> with others what God has given us by faith, we'll have enough faith to help others to increase their faith. That's right. Or we have no faith at all. That's right. And that's what he's saying. And that's what mission work is all about. That's what the local church work is all about. That's what our Christian life work is all about. It's not to go to heaven. It's not even to prove that we're good Christians. It's the love of God in our yeah, hearts amen. that's willing to do whatever we can do to keep people out of hell and to help other people keep people out of hell. Amen. Amen. 
All right, you got two minutes. And Terry's been flipping pages, and I smell wood burning so bad. And his wife keeps elbowing him. Don't say it. Don't say it. I don't want to say it. <laughs> it's only that. Uh, okay, so because right as you were reading through, and you're talking about uh, these people, they're going and they're preaching and all that stuff, and that they're doing, you know, they're doing the work of the ministry and stuff. What I was flipping through was when you go back in the uh, the book of Acts, and when they all uh, went from Cyprus and Cyrene over to Antioch. Who they send over there? They sent Barnabas, but you saw in uh, Acts chapter four, Barnabas was from Cyprus. So they sent uh, uh, those were his people that he was preaching to. You know that they sent, and that's what we as church body ought to do. Is you know if you're a mechanic, you can preach to mechanics better than I can. You know what I'm saying? You can preach to your people. You yeah. know, as, as you're going and be a help to the ministry in that way. And I wasn't talking about. You know, when I ate Andy, I wasn't talking about planting a church. I, I thought you were talking about preaching. You don't yeah. have to ask permission no, to preach. And I was like, no, go preach it. Go preach it, you know. But no, that's all I saw is how you make connections with people that are like you, you know. And those are the people that are the easiest to witness to are the people that are like you. And that's what we ought to be doing and, and seeking out and seeing those people, you know, the way that God's seen us to help them. That's right. Ed had his hands up. <clears throat> a while back when we were over in Georgia we went to church one Wednesday night and they had a missionary there and I believe he was from a Central American country anyway uh, it was cold that night and uh, he didn't have a coat and he looked like he was kind of chilling so after he had uh, talked and the service was over why well, I, uh, I went up to him and said do you do you need a coat do you have a coat he said no I know it. So I said, well, take mine. I had a nice raincoat with a lining on it and everything. It was nice and warm. So he took it and went on his way, and I went on my way. And about a month later, I went into church another Wednesday night, and there was a man there that owned a repair shop for foreign automobiles. And uh, he looked at me, and he said, you look like you're about the right size. He said, try this jacket on, and he had a jacket there. So I tried it on, it fit good. He said, good, that's yours. He said, I bought that and it doesn't fit me right. So, and he said, I bought another one too. Here's another jacket. So he gave me two jackets. <laughs> and uh, I was just amazed. And it just shows God works in mysterious ways. I had no idea. And in fact, I still got the jacket. I still wear it. And in fact, I'm wearing it right now when I think about it. But anyway, uh, God God works, especially for missionaries, I think, out in the field that have all these things that they need to spend money on and help people with and all that. So it pays us to support our missionaries and to help them. Amen. And I'm glad we're doing that with Brother Barrett. Amen. Yeah, amen. And always remember, we're all supposed to be missionaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Terry, you had to end up. Yeah, I was, uh, learned a lesson from my daddy many years ago. We used to have a, a camp ministry and bus ministry, and daddy would always sponsor several children to go. And uh, I would I would say to him, I said, Daddy, God's going to bless you that. He said, God's already blessed me. That's why I can do it. Yeah. And I, that's made me mindful of that. God's already blessed me. Now, what do I need to do? Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, it is. All right, we're out of time. Amen. Uh-uh. We're out of time. We're the last thing. Don't worry, don't worry about anything because God got it all took care of. And if That's all right. he ever gave me was heaven, not more than I deserve. That's true. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to be dismissed. And uh, thank y'all for coming to Sunday school. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope you stay for the preaching hour. I'm going to preach on something you probably haven't heard in a long time. And uh, so... Go to the bathroom, do whatever you got to do, and be right back to you. Huh? And uh, I'm going to ask Hallward to close in prayer for your home. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. Yes, thank, thank you for our preacher, Lord, that is able to read your word and expound it on it for, for our knowledge. And Lord, we just want you to plant your word in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Give us a Christian and a loving spirit, Lord, That's and right. help. And we thank you that we're able to help. That you That's blessed right. us that we're able to help our mission yeah. field. That's right. That we're able to help those in need. And Lord, we just ask you to bless us, be Please. with us in the coming service, Lord. Yes. Move yes. among yes. us yes. with yes. your spirit, yes. Lord, yes. and touch us. And we ask you to just continue.
continue to bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, you got 14 minutes. Huh? <laughs> The fruit of the spirit, right? Fruit of the spirit. It's the long list. I saw one of them. You got one of them and another one. It says the fruit of the spirit. You know, I thought that was kind of cool because it does go on and what you're talking about. That. That's what allows you to do that stuff. That's the only allows you to do that stuff. Because you set yourself a sweet home. Morning, Brother Terry. How you doing today? It's a little bit of a fire part of the crowd. Thank you. 